not because I was longing to do nighttime at all. It scared me. To, it never even occurred to me that that was a possibility. But over the years in game shows, I had worked with an executive producer named Peter Noah. And uh, he would say to me, you'd be great, you'd be a great director, a great comedy director. And I'm like, that would made absolutely no sense to me. But if you fast forward, he was doing a show called Cafe American over at Warner Brothers. And I was doing General Hospital at the time, I think. Um, and he called me and told me to come over and uh, to observe Jimmy Burroughs. And I said, thank you, but that's ridiculous. That, how could I possibly do that? And he said, because you're on the schedule, you're doing episode 15. And again, that's just somebody putting themselves out there um, for me. So I went over and watched Jimmy, and I sat in the audience, and that guy really knows what he's doing. And uh, I said, Jimmy, give me some advice. And he said, you've been shooting in here, widen out. This is funny. That's what he told me. So I was like, OK. Uh, and I ended up doing an episode of Cafe American. And it was um, a very wild week. Uh, it was the week of the Northridge earthquake. It was a, uh, we rehearsed Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, shot Monday, Tuesday. That Sunday night, early Monday morning, was the Northridge earthquake. And I remember running in, I was living in Sherman Oaks, very, we really got rocked. And I was running in uh, to my girls, and as I'm holding them, thinking the whole world is going to end, I thought, oh my god, I have to camera block. And I was so nervous about camera blocking. Uh, it seemed like a really big sign, and I'm not quite sure what. Um, but it turned out that the show was pushed a couple of weeks because um, the stage had suffered some damage. And I had suffered some damage in here, certainly. Um, and it gave me a couple of weeks to put some things in perspective. And it turns out that if it's a two shot and somebody wants a single, you can get a single. So it worked out. I should also mention that when we finally shot that show, we did our dress rehearsal. And before we did the show for the audience, the show was canceled. So why I continued in prime time, I have no idea, because it really it was, it was not a great time for me initially. Talk a little bit more about James Burroughs. Did he give you any other advice besides the widening, widening your shots? He told me to wear comfortable shoes. Um, and I think his greatest advice wasn't actual advice. It was just the good fortune to be able to sit and watch him. Um, through the years, he's been nothing but supportive and gracious uh, f towards me. Um, but. I sort of got to learn from the best. And I, and again, I did this one episode not counting on there being uh, another episode. You know, I, I just never looked that far ahead. I, I just was sort of in the moment enjoying my good fortune. Talk a little bit about working with the creator and executive producer, um, Peter Noah. Well, uh, you know, even though he, denies it. I, if it. If it weren't for Peter, I don't know that I'd be certainly sitting here today talking to you. Um, he saw something in me that I certainly didn't see in me. Um, and he said that if I did it, um, not only would I be good at it, but he said, you'll end up doing it a little bit more and then a little bit more and it will be a snowball effect and at some point it'll be all you do. That's truly what he said to me. So I guess he's kind of smart, and I'm grateful. So talk about the format of the show. It was a multi-camera show? It was a four-camera, multi-cam show. And had you ever done that format I before? I had so not done that before. I can't put it into words. And they weren't pedestal cameras. They were dolly cameras. And there were marks on the floor that were different from marks that I'd ever seen before. It was, it was not as different as I thought it was, but back then I can tell you I thought I was sending a man to the moon. I, I cannot tell you how overwhelmed I was. Um, but, but something really important happened to me on that show. Um, we were camera blocking, 
and I set my shots and a, um, a wonderful camera operator who's unfortunately no, no, no longer with us, a guy named Joe Blaisdell, called me over to his camera and said to me, you know, I'm shooting this, C is shooting this, maybe you want to shoot that. What, he was just trying to talk to me about something. So I was like, okay, so if he's getting that, I should get this. He's like, maybe. And he was absolutely right. And it was wildly kind of him to point that out. I go back, we finish the scene, we go to another scene, I set it up, and I said, Joe, okay? And he looked at me and said, yeah. And I, I realized that I didn't have to know everything. And I think that's one of the great lessons. And I was lucky to learn it then. Um, but part of what made me so nervous, and there were many things that made me so nervous, and I'm nervous now, uh, was that I thought I had to come in and know everything. But it turns out that when you're lucky enough to be in that position, everybody who does all of those jobs comes in knowing what they, they, they know better what they do than I would ever know. And you get to take advantage of that. And it's not only wildly helpful and life-saving, it's empowering. Directors don't have to know everything.